Good morning, my friends. I think the bell is going to interrupt me, but I'm just noticing that we've become shade chasers in the spirit of Jesus, right? (laughs) So did everybody, except for Jared, thank you so much for sitting out in the sun so that the rest of us can have the shade. (laughs) Jared's in the sun all day, so he sacrifices for us. (laughs) Is the bell going to ring? Okay, well, I'm going to start, and the bell's going to interrupt me. Did we decide it was two minutes late now? I think we decided it was two minutes late. (laughs) Two minutes early last week. I know, we just never know. It's going to surprise us. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the virtual and in-person worship of the First Church in Sterling, where we are gathered back together, wearing masks and spaced apart in the spirit of Jesus, committed to creating heaven on earth. We are practicing physical distancing and social revolution during this time of quarantine. We are spreading a pandemic of love. Welcome to everyone who is joining us on Facebook Live and to everyone who is here with us on the Common this morning. Welcome to all who need a church home and to all who call this church home already. Welcome to people from all towns and cities and states and countries. Welcome to all who want to follow Christ, who have doubts, who do not believe. Welcome to people of all ages, races, nationalities, abilities, sexualities, and gender expressions. Welcome to single, to partnered, to married, and to widowed people. Welcome to believers. Welcome to questioners. Welcome to questioning believers. Welcome to everyone. We welcome you to come as you are and to meet this God who challenges us to be more than we think we can be. We welcome you if you are not perfect, because certainly neither are we, and we know that the church at times has rejected difference and denied God's promise for itself and for others which is why we say without reservation, without reservation, that you are welcome here, all of you, just as God welcomes you as a beloved child. We are especially delighted to see you here if this is your first time with us and we would love to know more about you. We've realized that we have new folks on the common every week and we have no real way of connecting with you. Your faces are behind masks, which is appropriate, but but we can't recognize you when we see you and we want to make sure that you are in touch with us if you would like to be. So we have visitor cards this week, which we should have had all along out on our tables. And I think Christy is roaming around. Christy is right here, our head usher. She's such an amazing human being and she is yay Christy (laughs) and she's walking around with welcome cards so if you'd like one just raise your hand we won't you know I'll look at you when you raise your hand but she can come around and give you one if you don't have one yet we'd love to know more about you we'd love for you to fill it out if you're on the common and then if you're joining us for the first time online we would love to know more about you we've gotten lots of new people all around the country and even the world watching us on the internet thank God for Facebook live and we would love to know who you are and where you're watching from. So please check in in the comments, say who you are, where you're uh, watching us from. And then if you would like to um, be on our mailing list that comes out every Friday, you can go to our website at www.fcsterling.org and sign up there. So here we are. The church has left the building. It has gone virtual and it is regathered on the common. We will continue to do this for as long as we can because there is no bad weather, only bad clothing, right? So please bring a mask, a spirit of adventure, grace and cooperation, your own blankets and your own chairs. If it rains, we will make an announcement and be back online only. It turns out there is bad weather. (laughs) It's bad for our equipment anyway. Our worship will be broadcast on Facebook Live for all who cannot be with us in person every week from now until the end of time. It is so unnatural because I would love to greet all of you after worship and hear how you're doing, especially if you're new and I don't know you, but I can't. Um, So there'll be no receiving line and no coffee hour just so we can minimize the amount of time that we have together. We know that really helps to contain the virus. But it is not because I do not want to know 
who you are and how you are. So please be in touch with me. You can ask for pastoral care. I'm available by phone, by FaceTime, by Zoom, and for socially distanced visits outside. My information is in that bulletin that you have in front of you on the front cover. Please, please be in touch. I really mean that. Gathering in the spirit of Jesus means wearing our masks, right? So we are taking an abundance of caution to keep each other safe. So we ask that you keep your masks on at all times during the ride, even though there is six foot distance between you. The worship leaders will take theirs off to lead worship and they will replace them when worship is over. We put uh, enough space in between you and us that we think that is safe enough. When we pass the peace, we will not hug or shake hands. Uh, We will use a peace sign, right? Or we will cross our arms over our chests for a hug from where we're sitting. We will not pass the offering during the offertory, but there are two boxes at the entrance and at the exit on the two tables to make your offering there. And we also encourage you just to take out your phones and go online during the offering or at any time, www.fcsterling.org forward slash donate to make your offering. If you're joining us online, we'd love for you to do that too. Our most important ministry during this pandemic time has been feeding the people of our community during Operation Food is Love on Mondays from 4 to 5.30 p.m. outside the church in partnership with Meadowbrook Orchards and all of you. If you are a part of the team that organizes Food is Love or that volunteers for Food is Love, would you please stand, please, and just wave your hands around so that we can clap for you. This is an amazing, amazing team. And you too can be part of this team. Um, We give out between 500 and um, 650 meals every single week. Um, The need continues to be high, as is our ability to meet that need. We are um, collecting mass massive amounts of donations from all of you which are very much needed and incredibly generous we find ourselves in a place of having an abundance of money in order to make this ministry happen and i could not be more grateful for every single one of you there's also a box over here um, in front of our parish hall door across the street and if you've brought perishable, non-perishable goods, you can drop them off in that box. Also, if you have um, food from your garden, you know, like an abundance of zucchini and squash that you're trying to get rid of, that's actually very much wanted and needed by Food is Love uh, on the day of. If you uh, drop them off at, at Jen's house at Seven Sky Far Lane or even here at around uh, 3.30, we can actually give out that produce and it's been an incredible blessing to have that i oh um there's a little bit of water on the uh, table so if you've forgotten water there's four bottles left on uh, linda davis's table Um, so please come and take water if you need water and everybody's just say thank you to linda davis and also the incredible worship team that puts together these worship services john guile joel hiller kate sheridan linda davis ben goodwin and to all of the people who set up and clean up afterwards if you are looking for a way to just be super helpful and help serve your church a good way is just to offer to come uh, on early sunday morning and help the people set up and help the people clean up all of the stuff when we're done. And now we deepen into worship by saying together our affirmation of faith, which is printed in your bulletin. In the love of truth and the spirit of Jesus, we unite for the worship of God and the service of humankind. Today's call to worship is a poem by Robert Bly called Wanting Sumptuous Heavens. No one grumbles among the oyster clans, and lobsters play their bone guitars all summer. Only we, with our opposable thumbs, want heaven to be and God to come again. There is no end to our grumbling. We want comfortable earth and sumptuous heaven. But the heron, standing on one leg in the bog, drinks his dark rum all day and is content. Let Let us us worship worship content as the the heron for love of this comfortable earth. earth and sumptuous heaven. You can stand if you'd like to join us quietly in singing Sweet Hour of Prayer. (laughs) 
sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. With such I hasten to the place Where God my Savior shows His face And gladly take my station Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. Thy wings shall my petition Please, won't you pray with me? O oh God, who is greater than the most powerful forces in this world, enable us to be still and know that you are God. O oh Lord, who answers out of the whirlwind of everyday life, breathe in us your Holy Spirit to strengthen, comfort, and guide us in the midst of the storm. O oh, still, small voice. Speak to us this hour that we might become makers of your peace. This we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, beloved, may the peace of God be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. Please turn and greet one another with signs of Christ's peace and Christ's blessing. A reading from the epistles. Um, Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, Who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believes in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For no one believes with the heart and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. A reading from the Gospels, uh, Matthew 14, 22 to 33. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and come, came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Let the church hear what the Spirit is saying. God is still speaking.
oceans deep, my faith will stand, and I will call upon your name, and keep my eyes above the waves, when oceans rise, my soul abounds in deepest waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you never fail and you won't start now Crashes over me, crashes over me, for you are for us, you are not against us, champion of heaven, you made a way for all. Please won't you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together find their way into the heart of God this morning. Amen. Do you all, have you all seen the musical Into the Woods? <laughs> Kate, have you seen it? Yes. yes. Raise your hand if you've seen it before. Oh, a lot of you. That's because they made it into a movie, right? A Disney movie. Um, there's this song uh, in Into the Woods called No One is Alone. You know that song? Uh, the, it goes, uh, you are not alone, careful, no one is alone. Stephen Sondheim writes this line meant not only to comfort but to challenge, careful, you are not alone, right? This cultural moment calls for that kind of carefulness, and it calls for bravery as well. And we find ourselves somewhere in the middle all the time. This cultural moment calls for not the kind of bravery that comes from stepping out on our own, thinking that we can walk on water like Jesus. Instead, it calls for us to figure out how to be brave enough to admit we can't go it alone. You know what I mean? That takes a special kind of bravery to stay in the boat. We need to be brave enough to wait on God and trust in God's promise. We're not good at that. Careful. No one is alone. So our American idea of freedom makes us think that we are alone, 
right? But Christian freedom is deeply at odds with an individualistic notion of liberty. That's an American thing, not a Christian thing. In Christ, we are free because we are bound up in one another and bound up in God. In America, we are floundering precisely because of its grand old myth that we are a nation of individuals whose freedom and independence should take precedence above the good of the collective that God calls us to enact here on this earth. Hi, motorcycles. <laughs> They're enacting their own kind of special on earth this morning. So those folks who are going massless in Walmart that we're all mad at and threatening people with guns to assert their freedom, they are insisting on in, an individualism at the expense of others' lives, right? And, and we see that, and that's kind of the extreme. That's not Christian freedom. We know that's not Christian freedom. That's a distorted view of what it means to be an American. And... Those who purport to believe in the common good are not always doing a better job than the massless crusaders. So I know that those of you who follow me on Facebook know that I was horrified this week because I heard a woman call into a local NPR show about the governor's new orders given uh, Massachusetts' newly uh, rising COVID-19 cases, right? And she said that she hoped that we take everyone's social security numbers at large gatherings, like the wedding that happened at that hotel in Gardner, um, and make sure hospitals refuse to serve those people if they come in with COVID-19, right? I, I get it. We're angry. We're angry because we're scared. We're all scared. And we want someone to blame. And we feel indignant. We feel indignant on behalf of healthcare workers and teachers and children and all of the people of the United States, and, and that's understandable. But this woman's anger comes from her desire to save lives, and when we are feeling righteous indignation, we have a tendency to transcend our own deeply held values, <laughs> right? I've never seen a better example of that. Only love heals. So I've been thinking lately about the righteousness that comes from faith that St. Paul talks about in his epistle, because we're all really good at being righteous, <laughs> but sometimes it doesn't come out of our faith. So St. Paul's letter to the Romans says that righteousness does not come from following the letter of the law or making sure everybody else is too, right? He says instead that righteousness comes from following the law of love, which is far harder to do, isn't it? Especially when we're angry. And the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven or who will de descend into the abyss, right? He says, you don't get to, de to determine who is right and who is wrong. It's not your job, right? That's far above your pay grade, my friends. Faith says the word of love is near you on your lips and in your heart. That's the word of faith that we proclaim, St. Paul says. Love is Lord. We will rise because love is Lord. We will rise because we act as if love is Lord, even with the people we perceive to be our enemies. That's what we are promised by our God who will not fail us. Our righteousness does not come from being right. It comes from being loved. So I have been thinking about this as I watch people shaming everyone that they can think of to shame for very human behavior right now. Not just for obviously egregious behavior, like a, attending an indoor wedding of 300 people, but for everything, right? For everything from wearing a mask the wrong way, 
to seeing your family, to going on vacation, to wanting your kids back in school so they're so that your business won't close, right? To leaving your homes at all. We lack some common understanding of what the common good is right now. It's not everyone else's fault. <laughs> everyone has a different set of rules to judge others by. That's not our fault either because the rules keep changing. They keep changing by the day, right? <laughs> Even by the hour. And honestly, I don't think anyone knows what the end goal is anymore. I'm pretty smart, and I have been paying careful attention, but I'm not sure I know either, right? I mean, is it flattening the curve or eradicating the disease or getting the kids back to school? The means don't seem to be getting anyone to the end, so I understand the frustration and the rage, right? No one can see the end. <laughs> We're waiting on God to show up in the boat, and we are getting sick of waiting, So it's becoming clear to me that we are sort of gleefully shaming each other just for being human, shaming ourselves for being human. Do any of you sit in bed at night and just think about the people that you came into contact with on that day and think, what have I done? What have I done? I mean, we are shaming because we are scared and we're disregarding the logs in our own eyes because those are difficult to face. And we are, all of us, victims of terrible public policy. But this shaming, it rips at the social fabric, which is always the goal of empire. Always the goal of empire is to divide the people. Individuals are not in as much control as we think we are in solving this pandemic on our own. We need one another. We need one another to survive. We cannot afford to divide and separate right now. We cannot afford it. And shame is different than guilt, right? Guilt says, I've done a bad thing. I need to fix it. Shame says, I'm a bad person. I cannot fix it. So shaming each other does not help. It does not teach people who they are and who they can be, beloved by God, named and blessed as holy. Shaming each other is causing rage and extreme guilt and depression and despair and stigma that will lead to lying about our diagnoses. It's not good for public health. The culture of shame is going to traumatize loved ones who passed on the virus to people who died of it. It will traumatize the sick people themselves. Shame is not the way of Jesus, who healed the sick, who touched the leper, who assures us that salvation is available to everyone, not just the good, right? Our righteousness does not come from being right. It comes from being loved by a God who does not discriminate between the sinners and the saints. So I want to ask my church to do everything we can to change the culture. The culture of shaming, starting with ourselves. I know that we think we are helping. I know we are angry. I know people need education to do the right thing, but I am convinced that shaming is toxic. That is what my God teaches me. Shame does not change people's behavior. Grace does. The word of love is on our lips. It is. We just need to search in our heart to find the faith where it comes from. So in our scripture today from the gospel, Jesus has taken some time out, right? He's had a time out after feeding the 5,000 that day. Jesus was often overwhelmed by the sheer amount of work his ministry was in those hard days, the throngs of people coming at him. I beg you to save, right? The miracles, all of it got to him. He was tired, so he dismissed the crowds, 
and put his friends on a boat in the ocean so that he could be alone. (laughs) He went up to the mountain by himself to pray. It turns out Jesus was an introvert, right? (laughs) If Jesus can take self-care breaks, what makes you think you can't, my friends? And that night, a crazy storm whips up and Jesus can see that the boat and his disciples is in, is being battered, right? By the wind and the rain and a huge storm has come. So early in the morning, Jesus just sort of calmly, I mean, he's been praying all night, so he's like totally chill. And he just decides he's going to go out and walk on the water to reach them and save them because he can do that sort of thing. He's Jesus. And the disciples think they are seeing a ghost. And he says to them, don't worry, it's me, it's just Jesus. Yeah. But good old Peter doubts that it is him and says, Lord, if that's you, command me to walk on water. And so Jesus says, come, and Peter gets out of the boat and starts to walk toward Jesus, and the wind whips up, and he becomes afraid, and what happens? Peter starts to drown. And Jesus says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? The assumption with this story that most of us have, right, is that we are too scared, if we are too scared to walk on water through the storm, it must be because we are faithless. But if Peter had had more faith, he might have stayed in the boat. He might have stayed in the boat with the other disciples where he belonged, right? Waiting for Jesus to arrive. When Jesus identified himself to the disciples in the storm, only Peter raised a question and required a sign. That was when he showed his faithlessness. The other disciples apparently had enough faith to take Jesus at his word, right? To stay in the boat and keep rowing even until Jesus could get to them. The Reverend Chuck Poole notes that you can actually watch that idea take shape in the gospel by following the boat through today's gospel lesson. In verse 22, Jesus commands his disciples to get into the boat, right? And then in verse 29, Peter steps out of the boat and quicker than you can say, throw me an inner tube, he's in over his head. Then look at what verses 32 and 33 say. When they get into the boat, the wind ceased, right? And those in the boat worshipped, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Once everyone was back in the boat, things were better. Once everyone figured out where their place was with each other, things were better. They were all back where they belonged. And beloved, we belong in the boat with each other. Every single other. The people you disagree with, the people who have the wrong political signs, the people of all ages, races, nationalities, abilities, sexualities, and gender expressions, the people of your community, the people of your country. We belong in the boat with each other. It takes a lot more faith to stay here in the boat with the other humans waiting for Jesus than it does to try and go it alone. It takes more faith to stay in the boat with each other. So, thank God for the church right now. This is our boat. To some, it's a life raft. To others, it's a canoe that they have to paddle constantly if they want to stay afloat to go somewhere better, right? To others, still, it's a houseboat. And sometimes, like now, it hits dangerous waters and wind-whipped waves, and it still stays afloat because of the help of its passengers, For hundreds of years, this church has stayed afloat with the help of God, who we wait for, and all of you who stay together in the boat. 
some people lose faith in God or in the church and they get out of the boat, right? Sometimes finding another one to hop aboard, sometimes drifting out to sea alone on a raft, sometimes drowning in fear all alone. So even when we've lost faith, especially when we've lost faith, it helps to stay in the boat. It saves lives to keep paddling. The storm is fearsome. The people who get back in the boat start bailing it out and get to rowing. Those are the people that are saving me right now. So the people who are feeding the 5,000 with Jesus' help every week at Food is Love are saving me. They're saving us. And the huge task force that is meeting on Wednesday to figure out how to serve our families, given the fact that our kids aren't going back to school in September, they are saving me. They are saving us. You make us brave. You make me brave. I don't know about you, but I found myself trying to shift in this weird time out of time to be less judgmental, hateful, less hard, so I can stay in the boat where I belong, you know? I don't know how else to pastor. I'm scared, and when I'm scared, I fight or flee, and I appreciate prophetic rage as the fight response to fear, but I think it will lead to our drowning We need one another to paddle. We need one another to stay in the boat. And I just don't see myself getting through this moment if I am constantly enraged at the people in my community and in my country. It takes bravery to take our fear, our rage, and our love, get back in the boat, and just start rowing, even though we don't know what the destination is. So faith says the word of love is near you, on your lips and in your heart. Love is Lord. Get back in the boat. We will never be alone because love is Lord. We will survive the storm because love is Lord. We will not sink because love is Lord. We will not fail because love is Lord. We will rise because love is Lord. We will prevail because love is Lord. Amen. We're going to sing ourselves into a time of prayer now. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, when I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, when I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, when I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, when I breathe out, I breathe out love. Please won't you join me today in the pastoral prayer. When peace is fragile, stay with us, Lord. When tempers are raised, stay with us, Lord. When atrocities occur, stay with us, Lord. When forgiveness is rejected, stay with us, Lord. When talks break down, stay with us, Lord. When agreements are broken, stay with us, Lord. When darkness weighs upon us, stay with us, Lord. When we cannot see you, stay with us, Lord. When burdens feel too heavy, stay with us, Lord. When hope seems faint, stay with us, Lord. When we are weak, stay with us, Lord. When faith seems difficult, stay with us, Lord. For all who have lost hope, walk with them, Lord. For all who suffer, walk with them, Lord. For all who are sick and in pain, walk with them, Lord. 
For all who are struggling, walk with them, Lord. For all who have been badly hurt in life, walk with them, Lord. For all who are grieving, walk with them, Lord. For all who are depressed, walk with them, Lord. For all who feel rejected, walk with them, Lord. For all who are unloved, walk with them, Lord. For all who are oppressed, walk with them, Lord. For all who are anxious, walk with them, Lord. In the silence now, we lift up our prayers of healing and wholeness to you, O God. We pray all this for love's sake. Amen. We take an offering each week for the ways in which love spreads out from this church and into our community and into the world. Please give this morning as though lives depend on it because they do. You can Give uh, directly on our website at www.fcsterling.org forward slash donate. This morning's offering will now be gratefully given and most gratefully received.
for these gifts. Praise God most especially for these givers. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. May we use all of it to create heaven on earth. Amen. Please join us in singing our final hymn, number 629, in your heart or quietly under your mask. (laughs) Oh, You don't have a hymnal. In your bulletin. (laughs) The words are in your bulletin. (laughs) I have a hymnal. You don't. (laughs) When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, thou who rulest wind and water, stand by me. Oh, thou 
lily of the valley, stand by me, stand by me. And now, beloved, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God give you the gift never to sell yourself short, the grace to learn something new from something old, the grace to know that the world is now too small for anything but truth and too dangerous for anything but love. So may God take your mind and think through it. May God take your lips and speak through them. And may God take your hearts and set them on fire. Amen.